into creating the, the home honey, you have to keep them crowded. Okay, and the, in the two queen system, they are producing so many bees that you can't, you can hardly keep ahead of them in a normal system. If you try running a two queen system and try to compress them down to where they're forced to work the Ross rounds, they would, you would have to, that would be too much for them. But I, I think you would have a hard time getting them to stay in the box. Okay, now, at the end of the day, at the end of the season, when the honey flow is over and you're wrapping things up for the season, what do you do? Nothing. You pull the queen excluder out, you combine it into one hive, where now the queens can freely go their distance, and one or the other of them will take care of the other one, and they'll move on. I mean, that's the way it works. Then you do the same thing the next year. So for an investment of one queen, you double the production off of that one hive. But you're going to spend double the amount of time managing that hive. So what's the advantage of having two hives with four queens versus four hives with four queens? Sheer volume of honey. But it, so those two columns of, well, I never kept these, so I'm new to this. Those two columns of hives and boxes will make more honey than four columns? With one yes. Queen, with one queen yes, because, and here's why. Here's why. Each of those four separate boxes four separate colonies, needs its own house force. Which means, let's pretend for a second, it takes 20% of the population of the hive just to maintain the workings of the hive internal to the box. In a two-queen system, even though it's more population, your increase in number of bees required to maintain the box, the survivability of the, the hive itself, does not increase proportionally to that. But you have twice the queen laying power in the hive. So they're producing 3,000 honeybees each day, of which maybe only 10% of that is needed for the house force. Whereas in a single box, the queen will produce 1,500 eggs a day, and maybe 20% or 25% of that workforce will be needed as maintaining the internal hive. So the only advantage that the two queen does is it reduces the need for a house force, which increases the number of bees that you have as a field force, which is what you as a beekeeper want. Again, it's a lot of fun. It is absolutely awesome seeing one of these things go. And you can hear, oh my gosh, you can hear a viable two queen colony, colony 20 feet away, you can hear the buzz from me. Yes, back in the back. Uh, does what hold true for uh, honey also hold true if you want to uh, harvest pollen? Yes. Okay. Because it's the workforce, but it's it's the field force that does both. Right. Okay. Can you uh, put a different uh, two different types of queen? Yes. Good. It doesn't matter if it's a uh, if it's an Italian and a, a carniola or buck fat. That doesn't matter. I understand that your uh, housekeeping bees take two to three weeks to develop as housekeepers and then they want to become workers. You read my presentation. Let me get right into it. <laughs> I, I think where you're saying, what you're, what you're uh, leading up to is what I want to talk about. Okay, my name is Mark Eglon. The company that I run, and I'm not, a profe I'm, I'm not a professional. I did this primarily because I wanted to identify myself as a beekeeping producer if I go off to festivals and so on and so forth. I've been beekeeping for quite some time. Let's see, this is not my computer, so hold on a minute while I figure out the best way this button works. First, before you read this, I come on third generation. My great uncle, my grand uncle, my grandfather's brother, in the 1930s and 40s was a beekeeper, was a farmer. And just like Jim said, they all kept bees. Well, he decided during the war, when there was so much rationing on sugar, 
that beekeeping was a way to make money, and he did very well at it. My father helped him as a young man. My father was a science teacher. When it came time for my father to, to get me up to the proper age, I did 4-H beekeeping and Boy Scout beekeeping, and then when I left home in 73, moved away from it. Now oh, that's just something Dad wanted me to do, and I'm done with that. I got a world of time. 1991, I came back to it. I'd established myself. I was in a place where I wasn't moving around all over the country anymore. I had friends with property out far enough to where I could do this again, and I got back into it. By the way, back in the back, I'd just as soon not be tied to the mic unless I have to. And you guys on the back row are my volume control. If at any time you need me to increase a thumbs up or a wave up, or if you cannot hear me, I'll start using the mic. But until I get that signal from you guys back there, I'm just going to try to project it out, all right? Got back into it in 1991, 1992. I'm telling you, they weren't hard years maybe for the world, but they were hard years for me. And for you guys who are coming into this kind of new, I want you to look at this. February of 91, after keeping these with my father for about five years as a young man, I got two colonies. They were dead by November. Next year, now in the interim, I read everything I could find in the Green County Library about beekeeping. Next year, bought two packages, installed them. Everything was hunky dory, right? Dead by October. April 93, two packages. I caught four swords. I was up to six. This was so cool. Dead October 93. 94. I told my wife the winter of 93, 94, this was the last time. Bought two packages, caught two swarms, bought two colonies from another beekeeper. They all survived. Okay, what's different? 95, installed two packages, all survived, overwintered a total of 10 colonies, the winter of 95, 96, all survived. How many people were beekeeping then? Anybody in this room? Tell me about the winter of 94, 95, and 96. Bad. Cold. Say it again, cold. Cold and long. Winter started early and in